Go ahead, Stephanie. One thing oh. that makes you feel respected. Um, I think I think one thing is to have somebody actually listen to me. Um, I'm not going to name names, but um, you know, it's like when somebody comes to talk to you and it's like they want you to turn off the TV, stop reading the book, stop doing whatever you're doing and sit there and just, you know, like this, right? And then when you go to say something, I don't care, it's the answer you get. And it's like, <laughs> you know, and, and, I, and it, it, it's hurtful and, it, and it, um, it's totally, I think, disrespectful. I mean, what I say might have some kind of credit, you know, but give me a chance at least, you know what I mean? So I think that probably good is good point. That's, yeah. that's a great one. I was like, the top of my list was yeah. uh, listening. So mom and then Jamie. Yeah, I told, I Wait, told you her. said mom and then Jamie. Well, oh, I, oh agree with, I agree with Stephanie because it's not a conversation. It's a monologue by the other person. And you try and get a word in edgewise and um, then they keep going on about what, you know, what they're interested in and you don't have this interaction. So. Yeah, I agree with you. So I'm going to make that slightly, so I'm going to say listen, um, somebody listening to you, and then what you said, Mom, was a dialogue versus a monologue. Right, it yeah. It makes you feel respected. So if you say something, that they respond to that and don't just keep, awesome. you know, on awesome. their track. So. Uh, okay, Jamie, what makes you uh, feel respected? Um, I was going to say that, that I was agreeing with Mom, only I was putting it in, in, the, in the way that, that – Mark has said it several times, the slow to speak, but quick to listen. Okay. Awesome. Giving them respect. Yeah. Letting them know that what they have to say matters. Yeah. Before you feel that, you know, you're just going to have, you know, use ADD. Right. And not pay attention to what they're saying. Right. Good. So for anybody who just joined in, we are sharing one thing that makes us feel respected. Something that somebody does when they do it toward us, we feel respected we've so far we've had um when someone listens to us when someone has dialogue with us instead of monologue um and then um when jamie you kind of said a similar thing but when somebody um respects well can't use the same word when somebody honors your opinion and doesn't shut you down any okay who else would like to go you like my hand <laughs> are you waving your hand? <laughs> uh, just, I was just reading the comments that dad's been making in the chat and I was trying to understand the Rose Parade float comment. Yeah. Because his was waving his hand like that earlier. <laughs> yeah. The Rose Sorry. Parade wave. Okay. Didn't mean to interrupt. My apologies. Do either of you have something you'd like to share? No? You're eating. Okay. What was the question? The question is what is one thing that makes you feel respected. One thing that somebody else does, and when they do it, you feel respected. And so far we've had, basically when people listen to us, when they honor our opinion, don't shut us down and have a dialogue instead of a monologue. Yeah, I'll need some more time to think about something okay. that's not that. Yeah. Because that is the big one. Big. Yeah. For, probably for all of us. Okay, yeah. David. Uh, I was going to say, when someone uh, tells me that they made a mistake, mm -hmm. not only because it kind of shows me that they, um, they're willing to be humble, but it also makes it a, a lot easier for me to admit when I make mistakes. Right. Yeah. Awesome. So when they admit that they're transparent and authentic, not trying to pretend like they have it all together. That's really good. Excellent. Uh, Daryl, what makes you feel respected, Daryl? Uh, you're muted. You're muted. <laughs> yeah, I'm double muted. So I'm sorry about that. Yeah. Um, thanking people. When I get thanked, I feel respected. I think that's Absolutely. innate in the human psyche. Absolutely. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Yeah, that's, um, I made a mistake and I told, a fr I told a friend once that they didn't have to thank me and I regretted it because I felt very disrespected <clears throat> after the, uh, the long haul of the relationship. <laughs> yeah. My wife, my <laughs> wife used to run the, the busiest Carl's Jr. in the world was Carl's Jr. I think it was 62, right across from Pasadena City College. Yeah. And Car Carl Karcher came and worked for her for a whole day one time. He had this program called Back to the Basics. 
And all of his executives had to do that. And at the end of the shift, he came to her when he was ready to go. He said, is there anything I can do for you? And she said, you know, nobody ever thanks me. And he sent her a big thank you card about that big nice. special distribution. And she kept it for years. It finally fell off the wall. Wow. <laughs> I never forgot. That. I never forgot that. Lesson. That's cool. That's very good. Virginia, did I see your hand up? Uh, yeah, I want to get an understanding of the question. The question is, what is one thing the that... Question. Some, the question is, what is something that other people do that make you feel respected? Respected. So we've had, you know, when people listen to you, when they thank you, when they honor your opinion, when they're transparent and admit that they're wrong, um, and when they have a, a dialogue with you instead of a monologue. So did you have something or do you want a little more time to think? Yeah. I, think I, I think I do have something. Um, it's like when sometime when um, you do something wrong and you want to go to that person and, you know, maybe let them know how you, what you did. And they almost like cut you off and they'll say, oh, that's okay. Don't worry about it. You know, because I've done this before. I feel respected and I feel relieved. I don't feel burdened down or guilty because it's like they're letting me know that, you know, they are not, they're, they do the same thing. So I feel like they respect me in that matter. So when somebody forgives you quickly? Right. Okay. Yeah. That was on my list. I, I may have added that to my list. When, when people forgive you. Yeah. That's a good one. Excellent. Thank you, Virginia. Anybody else want to share what makes you feel respected? Jesus. Yeah, this is going to sound so seven of me, but when I, when I get invited, <laughs> respected, even, even, even <laughs> I did not have that on my list. That's a good one. <laughs> even if I can't well, make it, even if they know I can't make it, when I'm invited to something, I feel oh, wow, respected. That's, awesome. that's interesting. Not, like not everybody too. feels that way, just so you know. Just yeah, I know. <laughs> it's going to sound so seven. Specific to his personality. Yeah. So seven, he's talk, when he says seven, he's talking seven on the Enneagram personality uh, test. So. One of, one, of, one of the more social. Uh, one of the more social person, The most social personality. Or the most. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's a good one, though. That's a good one. I had not thought of that one. Um. Anybody else want to share what makes you feel respected? Something that other people do um, when they do it, it makes you feel respected. Virginia's got another one. Are you raising oh. your hand, Virginia? Um, I remember one, one, one time years ago, um, we were invited to Pastor's house for a lunch. A lunch, his wife had a lunch. Here. And she invited me. And so uh, when I got there, uh, you know, I almost didn't know where it was at, but I prayed and asked God to take me to the house. And he, when I asked that question, he sat me right in front of the house. But anyway, the people were so, she was very nice and friendly, and she made me feel, you know, I fit right in there with them. And even though she was a pastor's wife, you know, back in the day, uh, I just felt so comfortable, and I felt like they really respected me. You know, like everybody respected me, and we all talked. You know, nobody made me feel like I was a stranger. So That's I felt good. respect. So when when you're included, when you're included in something, which kind of yeah. follows on the heels of of being invited, but is even more. It's like when when you have a good hostess, they make you feel yeah. so at ease, and you felt included, that, and you felt respected. Yeah, that's good. That's a good one, Virginia. Thank you. Anybody else have something? I'll, I can start reading my list if you guys want ideas. You have a list. Hey. I made a okay. Wow. Go, Seth. Uh, when people show up. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> that's a good one. Yeah, hey, hey, so this is being invited as mine is when they actually show up. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. That's so I'm sorry good. I haven't shown up, Seth. <laughs> you weren't invited. Right, there you go. There you go. There you go. There you go. <laughs> no respect. No respect. Right in the heart. No, we we haven't. Hey, Jesus, we haven't done D and D online yet. You'll know when we do. Ah, for sure. Sounds good. 
before I before I read my list, let me ask Mark, Patrick, Sierra, and Stanley if you have anything you want to share because I don't want to steal from you. Something that makes you feel respected. Um, when I'm I'm taking I'm taken seriously mm. um, because of my um, many times because of my gender or my age, it's it could be easy to dismiss. Uh, my thoughts or my uh, uh, my knowledge um, um, as night how do you say that word naivete naivete, naivete. that's fancy um, and so when when people listen to what I have to say and understand that I'm coming from a place of like I know what I'm talking about that's good people take you seriously that's really good Patrick, um, do you have anything that you can think of that hasn't been said? <laughs> you can second somebody. Can I second a lot of people? Is that allowed? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Everybody. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't have anything new, new to say. Right. Thanks, y'all, for okay, saying Mark. things. <laughs> Mark has something new, and then May, oh, you want to go first, Megan? Go ahead. Yes, uh, so similar to the listening kind of uh, concept people were talking about, I feel respected when people show patience for me. Um, and that could look a lot of different ways, whether it's like I keep messing up on the same thing or I have to ask someone to repeat mm -hmm. themselves or just, you know, stuff like that. When they show their patient or when, you know, they're not getting easily frustrated and taking the time to do whatever I need them to do, I really appreciate that. That's a good one. Yep. I hadn't written that one down either. That's a good one. Mark. Mark said he had something new. Mm. Uh, when my time and space are valued. Mm. I feel respected when people respect my, my time and my space. Keep that in mind, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta keep that in mind. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good. Time and space. Um, hi, Ariana and Tito. Um, we are just finishing up our connecting question, which is, what is one thing that people do that make you feel respected? And let me see if I can read through the list. Mark's been taking great notes. So um, I, I'm just gonna look at people and see if I can remember. So Stephanie said when people listen to her, Jamie said when people um, take her thoughts seriously, don't shut her down. Um, Mom said when people have a dialogue instead of a monologue. David said um, when people admit that they're wrong and show their vulnerability, it, it makes him feel respected and more easily opens up. Um, Megan said when people show patience with her um, repeatedly and don't get easily frustrated. Jesus said when he gets invited, <laughs> when he gets invited things, he, make, he feels respected. Mark says um, when people honor his time and space. Um, Sierra said when people um, show, no, they take her seriously. When people take her seriously. No, I'm done. Yeah, Sierra, I'm going, oh. my boxes. Right. Seth said when people show up, probably I'm guessing when they say they'll show up and they actually do show up. Virginia said a couple things. Um, let me think. Virginia said um, when she's included and made to feel welcome. Um, what was her first thing? Oh, right. And you apologize, and that person forgives you. Don't worry. Did you hear that? Uh, when people forgive you easily. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's see. Who did I forget? Daryl said. What did Daryl say? Um, when I get thanked. Oh, when I get thanked. Yes, that's a good one. Thank yeah. you very much. Daryl. Thank you very much. Um, Jamie, did I get yours wrong? Or are you waving your hand? No, I was trying to just remind you of that somebody had said thank you, but we, mom and I didn't, couldn't remember who it was, but yep, it, it was Daryl. Right. Never mind. Awesome. Did I get everybody? Carol. Oh, Carol and just Stanley. got on. So Carol and Stanley are just arriving and we're sharing one thing that makes us feel respected. And in order to do this question, I sat and made a list to see if we had enough to actually go around. So I'm just going to read my list. Um, remember my name. When somebody remembers my name. Um, when somebody is helpful, they see that I'm working hard and they offer to help. That makes me feel really respected. 
Um, I'm not going to read off the same ones that have already been said. When, when people don't interrupt me, if I'm talking and, and they, they don't interrupt and try and finish my sentences. When they remember what I've said, Stanley is great at this. He will remember something I say, either in worship leading or in conversation, and he'll come back later, like days later, a week later, and he'll ask me about it. Boy, I just feel so like valued and honored when he does that. It's I always amazing. consult Stanley so I can remember <laughs> what you said. <laughs> Um, um, when ask, oh yeah, um, when people ask what I think, when they ask for my opinion and they really mean it, like they really want my opinion, um, when they give me the benefit of the doubt and honor, like know my heart and don't jump to conclusions that maybe, you know, I, cause they saw something I posted or they, um, maybe, maybe I walked right past them in church and I didn't say anything and they don't <coughs> immediately think I'm mad at them. Like they just know my heart. That makes me feel really respected. When people apologize, when they consider my feelings, when they put themselves in my shoes, when they think before speaking, when they suspend their judgment and wait to hear my full thought, um, when they share their heart authentically, when they trust me with something, a deep secret or just something important, um, when they're on time. Oh, I'm terrible at this. It's This is really a struggle for me because I know how much, when Stephanie shows up on time, it means she always shows up early, but it means that she respects our time. And, and I have, I struggle. I, I push everything right to the limit. And, um, and I know that it can speak volumes when, you know, you're on time for an appointment. Um, when you're prepared, when you communicate and don't just jump to conclusions, when you don't gossip to me about other people um, or about me to other people, um, <laughs> when you're kind, um, when you ask me things instead of just telling me things, yeah, or you're humble and you follow through. That's a big list. <laughs> Any of those things make me feel really respected. And um, I don't know, is there anything else that some, anybody wants to add before we start with prayer? Stephanie? Um, I just wanted to say about the being on time business. I, I just, I grew up with parents that just absolutely were a stickler for it. And I mean, they would get to church two hours ahead of time. And they did all their visiting then, and then the minute they said amen, they were out the door and in the car, you know. But but they they always were absolutely on time, and I've always been a kind of a stickler for that. In, in, in and if you didn't, weren't ready on time, then you get left behind. That's all there is to it, you know. <laughs> it's Carrie, that, Carrie, you know our intern, Carrie, Carrie Smith Osborne. She um she used to, her her dad always taught her, you know, to be on time is late, and to be early is on time. Yeah, and, I was just gonna say I, that. I always, I admired that because I struggle with that. That is one thing I struggle with. So if I'm ever late for y'all, I don't mean yeah. disrespect. We next love you time, anyway. Next time I'm late, <laughs> <laughs> I apologize in advance. I, I'm going to work on that. So anybody else? You like jogging right up until the time you're going to call me? Oh, Message yeah. me saying, hang on, I'll call you in five minutes. <laughs> well, I was covered in paint. I figured I needed to uh, wash up. That's Anybody key. else want to share anything? Okay. Well, um, we're going to start with a prayer. Um, and one of the reasons why I asked that question is because I was just been watching the news and um, watching what people are crying out for when they're protesting. I'm talking about the peaceful protesters. People are out there because they're upset. And, and I, I keep thinking, like, what is it they want? They want to be heard, respected, listened to valued they want you know they want to see things they want people to take them seriously all these things that we said that's what they're asking for and um so that's why i asked the question because i'm hoping that maybe we go away today and offer that respect to other people and make the world in our little corner of the world a little bit better and even if somebody else thinks differently than you or is super angry to just sit and listen to them and not like suspend your judgment let them vent and um, that shows them respect. You don't have to convince anybody of anything, but to sit and listen. Like the few, I've seen some news clips where the police have stopped, taken off their gear and kneeled, taken a knee and just listened and said, we're with you, we hear you. And that has like diffused the crowds. And I thought, wow, wouldn't, wouldn't that be amazing if everybody did that, you know, if, if we really were trying to hear what was being said. So, um, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and um, mute everybody, and I'm going to show, I want everybody to take a deep breath. 
and just slow your pace. We're not in any big hurry. We will get as far as we get tonight. Um, but I know it's been hectic for a lot of people. And um, I know if, even if it's just the fact that you just turned off the news or stopped reading the news feed, that can sometimes kind of harry your mind. And I'm gonna play this kind of an abstract Lord's <clears throat> Prayer. So we all know the Lord's Prayer, right? Thy Father, right, you know, is it, you know Our the Lord's Father. Our father, sorry, I said thy father. Yes. <laughs> um, so um, it's not word for word, it's abstract and it's like images and you hear like Arabic in the background and different languages and you see different images. And um, I just want you to take a deep breath and sit with it. Don't rush it, don't worry about when it's gonna end. It's five minutes long, so there you go. And just, um, and just be in the spirit of, of thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So here we go, let me go.
comment. Oh. Amen to that prayer. I hope you feel calm in your spirit. And I hope that um, we can conduct this meeting in the spirit of the Lord's Prayer. That, by the way, was produced in 2015. Isn't that crazy how the images are, are still so apropos? So um, welcome to those who joined us while we were starting. It looks like Janice just popped on. And um, we are in the book of James, in James 2, and my bad on the email, I said James 3. I guess I was rushing us along. Um, we, we still have a few verses, quite a few verses left in James 2 to cover. And interesting verses too. They are um, verses about faith and works. And this could be a real invigorating discussion. So I thought the best way, um, we'll just go ahead and read the rest of James 2. And I'll go ahead and share my screen so that um, I can take notes and you can see the scriptures also. And um, if anybody else has a different version other than the NIV and you want to pull it out, we're in James 2, 14? All right, 14, I think. Okay. So I'm going to share a portion of my screen, and that way I can see everybody's. All right, so I just need, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger, a little, uh, a volunteer to read. I get this. There we go. Okay. Uh, 14 through 26. So if you would like to read and you can unmute your microphone. And I will move this. Do I have any, let me, I got to open my video panel so I can see everybody's faces. Okay. Do I have any volunteers, somebody who would like to read 14 through 26? I'll read it. Thank you. Uh, what good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about the physical need, what good is that? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accomplished or accompanied by action, is dead. Uh, what, what is the last verse? Um, oh, all the way down to the bottom. Oh, oh, okay. 26. Yeah. Okay. If someone will say, you have faith in your deeds. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by my deeds. You believe that there is one God? Good. Even the demons believe that, and they shudder. You foolish persons, do you want evidence that faith without deeds is this? Was not our father Abraham considered righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see that his faith and his actions were working together, and his faith was 
made complete by what he did. And the scripture was fulfilled, it says, Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. And he was called God's friend. You see that a person is considered righteous for what they do and not by faith alone. In the same way, was not even Rahab the prostitute considered righteous for what she did when she gave lodging to the spies and sent them off on a different direction? As the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is dead. Thank you, Stanley. Um, I felt like that was all one thought, so, um, and it takes us right up to the end of chapter two. So I, let's just go ahead and focus on the very beginning here, um, 14, I guess 14 through 19, and ask questions about that. Um, yeah, so I, I, maybe we could read this in 14 through 19 only in another version and just kind of hear it maybe in a couple different um, translations, and then we'll come back and start asking questions. So this, as you hear it read again, um, go ahead and ask, think of questions that come to your mind. Like, what does that word mean? Or who is he talking about here? Or why did he say that? What did he mean by that? So um, does anybody else have um, a, a translation that, other than the NIV, that they'd like to read from? Let me see, scroll through mom. What, what translation? Uh, the New Living Translation. Okay. Do you want to read that? Okay. I will see if I can pull it up too. Okay. Well, Go ahead. What good is it, dear brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith, but don't show it by your actions? Can that kind of faith save anyone? Suppose you see a brother or sister who has no food or clothing, and you say, goodbye and have a good day, stay warm and eat well, but then you don't give that person any food or clothing. What good does that do? So you see, faith by itself isn't enough. Unless it produces good deeds, it is dead and useless. Now, someone may argue some people have faith, others have good deeds. But I say, how can you show me your faith if you don't have good deeds? I will show you my faith by my good deeds. You say you have faith, for you believe that there is one God. Good for you. Even the demons believe this, and they tremble in ter terror. Awesome. Can pop, let me pause there. Sure. That's good. It's, it's always good to hear it in another translation. Um, thank you, Mommy. Who, who else would like to read? What translation would you like to hear it in? Let's pick one more. What the message or the voice or passion, something that kind of paraphrases it in a, a more common language. Anybody you care? Passion. You want to do the passion? Okay. So let me see. Let me scroll down here. Um, passion. There we go. Passion. Okay. So um, here's passion. Let's just do. Um, let's just do fourteen through yeah, fourteen through nineteen. In uh, the passion, anybody want to take a stab at that? Do you want to read it, Ariana, since you suggested it? <laughs> sure. Okay. Okay, my dear brothers and sisters, what good, good is it if someone claims to have faith but demonstrates no good works to prove it? How could this kind of faith save anyone? For example, if a brother or sister in the faith is poorly clothed and hungry and you leave them saying, goodbye, I hope you stay warm and have plenty to eat but you don't provide them with a coat or even a cup of soup. What good is your faith? So then faith that doesn't involve action is phony. But someone might object and say one person has faith and another person has works. Go ahead and go ahead then and prove to me that you have faith without works. And I will show you faith by my works as proof that I believe. You can believe all you want that there is one true God. That's wonderful. But even the demons know this and tremble with fear before him, yet they're unchanged. They remain demons. Mm. Thank you. Excellent. Okay, well, let's ask some questions about this. Let's go back to my notes. And um, whoops, that's last week's. I have, should, shouldn't have that one open. So I got too many things open, guys. Surprise. Okay. Um, 
and I can't. All right, let's pick a different color for tonight. I'm, I'm just giving you guys time to think about your questions. So, um, Let's see, let's do something bright. I don't wanna do red, that's too bright. We'll do, we'll do bright, bright blue. I like it. Okay, what are our questions as we read these passages? What are deeds without faith? <clears throat> um, can you elaborate on that just a little bit? Like, um, what are the actual deeds or? No, like, he explains what faith without uh, deeds are. So what are deeds without faith? Okay, I see. Like, as a whole, what are deeds without faith? Okay. Good. Okay. Let me, let me scroll up so you can see this again. Actually, I'm going to move this up because... We're actually only talking about these verses right here. We're asking questions about 14 through 19. So what are deeds without faith? What are some other questions you have here? We're down to 19, yeah. She's asking questions now, not answering. I know. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're just asking questions. Oh, I just have a question. Um, did you have a question? Yeah, I just want to know if deeds without faith, is that the same thing as faith without deeds? No. no. Uh, it's not, not, not the same kind of yeah. question. But we can ask. You want to ask that? Sure. <laughs> without deads. <laughs> Um, wonder, I wonder why he said even the demons believe that. I just found that interesting. So why did James say even the demons believe that and shudder? So he's saying that, that, that demons believe. Yes. Okay. All right. Next, with another question you have here. We're just asking questions. Daryl. Uh, um, uh, okay, I'll form it and, and as a question. What is meant by the word faith here? Okay, good question. You have faith and I have deeds, okay? Um, what's another question? What good is it, my brothers and sisters, someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm, be well fed, but does nothing about their physical need and needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds, and I'll show you my faith by deeds. You believe that there's one God? Good. Even the demons believe that and shudder. So, um, oh yeah, I see a hand, sorry, sorry. Jesus? Yeah, do we need deeds to be saved? Good question. I was just like turning that around, how to word that. Do we need deeds to be saved? Ooh, that's a big one. Yeah, okay, I have another is that a Patrick hand or a Seer hand? It's a Patrick hand. <laughs> I'm, trying, I'm trying to block her. <laughs> yeah, um, Making her feel disrespected. Uh, uh, is prayer a deed? Oh, oh, that's a good question. Hmm. I have another question. Okay, Megan. Uh, what qualifies as a deed or a work in the context of what James is saying here? Can you all see my screen? Okay, is it blurry or clear, or how does it look? It's okay. All right. I changed one setting. Um, I found it made it a little clearer, so I was hoping that you can read it okay. Um, hmm. These are good questions. Maybe just a couple more. Is James making the word, uh, the words faith and belief synonymous? Synonymous? Did you say synonymous? Like equal? 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Say, do you say faith and deeds? Uh, belief. Oh, belief. Oh, oh good. Okay. Belief. It's non. It's a non sin on omas. The non anonymous. Non anonymous. The non. Did I spell that? Is that right? It looks it's, weird. Okay. All it's right. fine. We've looked at it long enough that it's going to look weird either way. <laughs> it, it got a red squiggle, so I have one too yeah. many on on. There we go. Oh. Got you white. Okay. Um, okay, Megs. Yes. Okay. So in verse 17, he says, faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead, right? And then in 18, he says, so you have faith, or no, and, uh, show me your faith apart from your works, and I by my works will show you my faith. Uh, but unless I'm missing something, he never specifically talks about like works by itself. And so I wonder like if you are doing these works, the, the kinds of works that you would do if you had faith, what does that mean if you are not necessarily proclaimed a believer? I don't know. I don't have a more specific way to, to phrase that question. But like, if you have the works that someone of faith should have, but you don't say you believe in God, like, I don't know. What does that mean? Mm. Are they still just as valid and just as beneficial? If not more. So let me make sure I understand what you're saying. So. James doesn't seem to talk about works and deeds by themselves. But if someone has works and deeds by themselves without faith, what does that mean? Yeah. Okay. Okay, someone has, did I see another hand? Is that a Stephanie hand? Nope. Without faith, belief, um, what does that mean? <laughs> That's like the best way I can, um, Let's see. James doesn't seem to talk about works and deeds by themselves. If someone has works and deeds without faith and belief, what does what does that mean? Or I guess if you want to be more specific, like yeah, yeah. are those works just as important or beneficial as the works done by people who say that they believe? Okay, that's a that's a pretty deep question. Okay, I think we've got enough to get started here. Did we lose Janice? Does she leave? Janice? Oh, she's Pixel Three XL. No, that's oh, that's Virginia. Oh, there's Janice. Hi, Janice. <laughs> she, had Hi. Wave, she had to wave vigorously. <laughs> Good to see you. So um, I'm talking while while I'm listening to you all. That's why I'm away <laughs> okay no problem no problem just to let you know our format pretty much is we just ask questions we read it a couple times ask questions and then discuss the questions so okay so let's go to let's go to the first verse what good is it my brothers and sisters if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds faith and no deeds can such faith save them so that kind of hits our our this question right here faith and no deeds let's move this the top what is faith with no deeds what in the world would that would that be <coughs> any ideas what is faith someone claims to have faith okay so it's not that they have it they claim to have it that's maybe a caveat there um someone claims to have faith but has no deeds can such faith save them any thoughts on that Uh, I'm going to move this up. I have a Is, thought. Okay, you have a thought? Not a very well-developed thought. It's really just a figure of speech that came to mind. But someone who who talks the talk without walking the walk. Okay, So Good. just all they have is their words, and they don't really act on it. Or rather, more more eloquently put, their actions do not align with their stated values. Ooh, a line. Yeah. The the voice translation says they act in a way that denies that faith. Mm. Ooh, that's strong. 
I think we can all, probably all think of um, examples of this, right? Somebody who just says one thing, but their actions say another. Um, so what, I, yeah, go ahead. Was yeah, my, I guess my question is, does a lack of deed indicate a lack of faith? Right, yeah, good question. What is meant by the word faith here? And do we need deeds to be saved? So these are the next two questions I think that really fit with this section right here. Um, what, what kind of faith do you think, what do you think this word faith right here is? What kind of, um, and I think even um, Sierra had brought up, is, is James making the words faith and belief synonymous? Um, Pistis. So it's okay, Mark, you wanna tell us? Okay. I think Daryl can tell us better. <laughs> and he's done a great study on James in the past. Oh, good. But the, the Greek um, here, faith is pistis, right? P I P I S T I S. Is yeah. that right, Joe? P I S T I S. And what does it mean? Um, um, so it means three or four different things, depending yeah. on what context James is using it in here. Mm -hmm. And it's like our word belief. Mm -hmm. And I think I said this once before, it means either an ardent and unshakable confidence in something as true, unshakable confidence, or it means a, an acknowledgement that something must be the case based on the evidence. Or it means a tacit agreement that something might be the case. Oh, <laughs> oh, it might be the case. Yeah. So, and the word that's used here, the the Greek word is these is James is using a play on words here clearly because when he says the demons believe this, we all know that demons don't have faith, but faith is a gift from God. Mm. Um, so, which one of these is he referring to in the very same sentence when he uses the word faith two or three different times? When he asks, can that, that's the definite article, by the way, can that faith save him? Maybe he's talking about number two. <laughs> mm. An acknowledgement that something must be the case or acknowledgement that something is the truth or is true. So I think that's the key to it. Um, and it, I, I don't think you can talk about faith without talking about deeds. The Greek word there is ergon. It means um, it means works, but it, but it really more means um, something that is accomplished, and it comes from the Greek word ergo, which means to accomplish or to produce. So to say that you have works in this sense of something that's produced um, without faith doesn't really mean the same thing. You can't produce these kinds of works without faith, but you can do the same thing. Mm. What's producing them? God is the source of all good things, so we must give God the credit for it. But that doesn't mean that the person that's doing them themselves have faith. I mean, Adolf Hitler might have given somebody a sandwich one time when they were hungry. I don't know. <laughs> wow. But the two words, faith and works, or faith and productivity here, are used as a play on words throughout um, this this epistle. And when he when these two words play off of each other, it's clear that they're playing off of each other. For example, James says, um, faith without works is dead. The words that are really used are really poetic. It says um, that faith without production is unproductive. That's what it really says. Uh, yeah. Belief okay. without productivity is unproductive. It's a play on words. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so you're, okay, let me see if I can capture what you said. That was so good. Belief without productivity is, is unproductive. Is unproductive. Yeah. And he uses the same word here, pistis, that he uses to mean faith a little bit earlier. But he's in a way making fun of their... So we're talking about love your neighbor and the law and everything else. And they claim right. they keep the law and he proves that they don't. He just proved that. 
But they might say, well, hey, I got faith anyhow. Okay, so you keep the law. You got works, but I got faith. Uh, and he's saying, okay, let me make fun of that word. Wh which one of these three definitions are you employing here? And is it true? <laughs> ah. So that kind of, that helps answer a lot of these questions. Um, it's so good to understand the context of, with which James is speaking. Um, and of course, we didn't go back and read, again, what we've covered so far. But you're right, we're in this context of um, talking about love and what does it look like to love your neighbor. And he's combating things that we don't hear the other side, you know. He's combating things that have been said or are being said and um, and writing this letter to combat ideas that are out there. One of them is that you can have faith or works, right? Am I understanding? Because, uh, yeah, because otherwise one has to wonder how in the world did he get from talking about the law yeah. to talking about faith, right? It's, right. It's obvious that he anticipates their answer or they answered it flat out. <laughs> right. Either way. So you said something, Daryl, um, that kind of speaks to Jesus's question about do we need deeds to be saved? And I can't remember um, what you said. No, I think that's exactly how you put it. Do we need deeds to be to be saved? And I think that it's, it's a really good question to reflect on because um, do, do you need salvation to have Jesus? I mean, Jesus causes salvation, mm. right? Do you need deeds to be saved? If you are saved, they will be more than just deeds. There will be productivity. There will be production, the accomplishments of faith. Otherwise, they're just they're just deeds. And we know that works of the law cannot save anybody. That's a, that's, that's a, a good philosophical question, yeah. <laughs> question though. It, I, I guess it, it really asks, can our works save us? And yeah. of course, we know Paul says Paul says no to, to that, especially in Galatians. And some people have said, well, do James and Paul uh, contradict each other in mm. their ideas of faith? Paul is famous, his writings are famous for uh, faith alone. Um, it's only by faith that you'll be saved, not by your works. And, and then James turns around and says, uh, your faith is dead without works. We do have to understand that Paul and James are talking about two kind of different sets of works, I think. Paul, they're, well, let's put it this way, they're dealing with two different matters, using same and similar words, but dealing with two different matters. Uh, for, for Paul, there were some Jewish converts to the way who were still saying that Gentiles had to do some very Jewish things in order to uh, uh, join the clan, as it were. Um, they still had to be circumcised, or, or depending on the uh, what side of the where on the spectrum the, the Jewish um, converts were, um, they had to do other things that were required by the Jewish law. And, and Paul says no. They don't have to do those things. They don't have right. to observe the Sabbaths or uh, be circumcised in order to be a follower of Jesus in today's parlance. Uh, so James, it sounds like James answers Paul answers that question. When Paul says you have to have faith and you are saved only by faith, James is saying, yeah, but you don't have it. Yeah. Because if you did, you would have some works. And, um, and, 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 and James, yeah. James is working with, with the issue of... Um, a, a different set of works, not the works of the law uh, that, that Paul was dealing with or, or talk, speaking to. James was was talking about more like more like good deeds. That if you if you say you're a believer or adhere to this Christian religion or this set of beliefs, that will be productive. It will produce fruit, and here's what it looks like: not the keeping of the Sabbath or being circumcised, but by these deeds, um, a totally different list of, of deeds or works than, than what Paul was writing about um, to the church at Galatia. Um, for James, the, the, the deeds are what? Um, we've already talked about uh, taking care of the orphans and the widows, mm -hmm. but here he specifically talks about um, helping somebody out with clothes, daily food, um, 
to giving them something warm to wear, uh, and, and and such as that. It's, you know, it's kind of a different different set. So I, I'm just saying, James and Paul don't contradict each other. In oh, uh, no, I'm perfectly. They're perfectly in harmony. Uh, anybody remember Dr. Don Ward? I was in one of his theology classes one time, and he read something from the Old Testament, and I said, "So, what you're really saying is that works are the fruits on the tree of faith." Mm -hmm. And he became very angry when I said that. Mm. Wow. Well, I, I'm going to read a, a, a little blurb from an, <laughs> a little blurb from a call out in um, The Voice. It says, some passages of the Bible seem to contradict each other. James is one of the most frequently cited examples. On one hand, it appears James is saying that salvation is achieved by work. On the other, writers like Paul emphasize that salvation comes by faith alone, uh, specifically in Galatians 2. How can we reconcile these seemingly conflicting accounts? A careful look at the scriptures demonstrates that the contradiction lies only on the surface. Essentially, Paul and James are talking about different issues. Paul in the, is in the middle of a debate with some Jewish students, Christians over whether Gentiles must live like Jews to enter the family of faith. He says that no one is made right with God by performing the works of the law, such as circumcision, Sabbath observance, dietary rules, and regulations. Instead, all people are made right by faith, thanks to God's grace. For James, the situation is entirely different. The works he is talking about refer to God's people helping the poor, not whether non-Jews must live like Jews. James mm. is concerned about a shallow, insincere, and hypocritical faith. To put it another way, it is the difference between the root of salvation and the fruit of mm. salvation. The root of salvation is the grace of God, what grounds our faith. The fruit of salvation is our works, what flows from our faith. Even though we are saved by grace, we should still have a faith that works, or as Daryl put it, is productive. Um, in fact, Paul reminded Titus eight times in his letter to him, to Titus, that good works are to be a natural result of faith. So yeah, I know that was kind of. If, if, if you take James's words as they were actually spoken, they're funny in English. They probably wouldn't be in, in, in Greek or American, but they're in, in English. They're funny. He says, "Faith without works is worksless." Right. <laughs> Those are pretty much the exact words that are used. Yeah, and that's pretty obvious, right? <laughs> if you don't have works. You don't have works. I mean, if you're unproductive, then you're unproductive. Um, Jesus, let me see if find your face. There it is. <laughs> um, does that kind of answer your question at all? Does it help? Yes. Yes, it does. Okay. So it's so easy to just grab one verse and then try to build a theology on it, you know, that, oh, no, it looks like if I don't have these deeds, if I don't do, you know, the things listed there, like, go to a prison and visit the prisoners and give cold water to somebody who's thirsty and like do these exact things then I'm not saved. Um, but it's a challenge to us by saying, what are the fruits in your life? Right? What are the fruits in your life? And um, if you are, if you are truly saved and your root is in grace, you administer grace to others um, in these other ways, by feeding people, by helping people, by serving, by sacrificing. So he was challenging them in this, in this arena. Um, let's see if we answered any of the other questions. Or does anybody have any questions based on that, Mom? Yeah? Well, I just have my Bible study fellowship lesson, and it says, context is crucial. Paul wrote largely to Gentile believers, and James wrote largely to Jewish believers. Paul focuses on how works have no relation to our justification or establishment in salvation. James focuses on how works necessarily relate to our sanctification or experiences of our salvation. I don't know if that helps or not. He said Paul's audiences often distrusted grace, so they fell into legalism. And James' audience often distorted grace, so they fell into den denying works. Mm -hmm. So there were two oh. different audiences looking at it both. different ways. Ooh, can you read that one more time? Paul's audience distrusted grace. Distrusted grace, so they fell into legalism and in earning favors from God. Right. James' audience 
often distorted grace. So they fell into denying works, denying that works were necessary in the Christian life. Wow. We've seen that even in modern times, right? Um, so I, I shouldn't have said that. I lost, I lost what she said. Uh, audience distorted grace, so they fell into, what did you say? Denying, denying works. Denying works. Or denying that works were necessary in the Christian right. life. Max, go ahead, Max. Yeah, go ahead, Megan. Thanks. Uh, what what you just said, Grandma, reminds me of a thought that I had earlier. Um, you know, just thinking about the question, do we need deeds to be saved? You know, I think we've we've established like no, like that's not required for salvation because Jesus did that for us, regardless of what we do. But I think we do need deeds in order to participate in that salvation and to participate mm. in the kingdom of heaven that is already yes. here mm. so we're not really living in our faith if we're not acting on it so like i mean that, and i think that's why i think that's why it's translated as like faith without works is dead because like when well, you're not living in the fullness of god's kingdom if you're if you're not acting on on what you know about him yeah yeah i was thinking about it this way earlier um, and I don't know if this is a good analogy or not, but if you have a car, you have a, you have a car, but if it's not running, it's what? It's dead. We've all had dead, <laughs> dead cars, right? You still have a car. It's still a vehicle. It's still a motor transportation. It's just not doing what it was created to do. It's dead. And, and that's, I think that's kind of like faith sometimes. We still, we're still saved and, and we still have some semblance of faith it's just dead it's just not mm. doing producing <clears throat> doing what it was intended to do we're we're, we're like we're, we're stuck we're stifled we're um we're dead I'm, I'm the one analogy i like to use on that is heat uh, if you ask the following question how intelligent would you say if you asked is heat hot does heat <laughs> need hotness you cannot have heat without having hotness and you can't have faith without having works. You can do what appear to be works mm. and not have faith, but you can, faith produces works. It's not as if faith ought to produce works or that you should produce works if you've got faith. Faith cannot but produce works no more than heat can produce anything but hotness. <laughs> faith does produce works. Jesus does produce salvation. Um, the fact that you are saved and that you do have faith is why you do good works. So, I mean, there was a time when I tried to do good works to hope that I could get some more faith maybe or something. It was how ridiculous that sounds. But, um, of course, we understand that you do works because there's faith inside you doing those works through you and somebody else gets the credit for it. Wow. Yeah, I'd like to take that plus what Megan said. Uh, there's there's a phrase that your 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 works don't save you, but you do works because you are saved. But but I I do think it is synergistic. Is 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 that when when we do good works that are as a, the fruits of our faith, by that participation and being in in the ministry of Father, Son, and Spirit, that I, I would say that does something to our to our faith it, it may not produce our faith or make faith but it i think it strengthens it i think it does embolden it it doesn't create our faith but i, I think it's a cyclical synergistic symbiotic if you will relationship of, of of that 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 creativity that ministry that service that hospitality that sacrifice i like that, that word cyclical that i like that word cyclical yeah yeah i think I agree wholeheartedly. I like that word too. That's a good word. It's it's a cycle, right? Yeah. Cyclical. Uh, uh, cool. Yeah, I've heard, I've, I've heard people say <laughs> they, they're struggling with their faith, or they're not sure if they believe right. anymore. But but then they end up going on some kind of a mission trip, or they they find themselves in the midst of a situation where they they participate in ministry whether they want to call it that or not um or even if it's labeled that uh and and they see god work and and their faith is in, in bolton so it's amazing 
So has anybody, as you're sitting here thinking about this, has anybody questioned themselves and said, ooh, do I have works produced by my faith? Do I have the fruit? Am I the only one who thought that? <laughs> David, I'm trying to be real. <laughs> I feel like I'm not as convicted. You know? I mean, it's like, oh, okay, do I have the, do I have the kind of faith that produces good works? I mean, yeah, I just had to stop and, and ask myself that and think about it. Because, I mean, I love what Mark and Daryl have been saying about, like, it can't help but produce it, right? Is heat hot, you know? Is the car running or is it dead? And and so that's the question is is um and what are what are my what are my deeds that show what is what's the fruit on my tree? Um and not that I can produce it on my own will. So it it'd be interesting, it'd be an interesting discussion with somebody close to you. Um imagine sometimes we can't see it in ourselves. Um, I imagine sometimes like this is the beauty of like an accountability partner or a mentor, somebody that can reflect back to you and say, well, I see this and this and this in you. And I see these ways that God expresses his love and joy. Um, and his, when you do these certain things, um, let's see, did we answer this? I don't feel like is, is James making the words faith and belief synonymous? I, I could add something to the discussion. Okay. I would and love to hear it, Seth. So I think let's not get too caught up on deeds being something outward that we can see. Okay. It, I mean, being faithful and acting in faith can be so, something such as taking care of your own kids and, uh, trying to look out for what's best for them and making sure that they're healthy and able to enter the world. It doesn't have to be like, you don't, you don't have to go up to every person who you see on the street and give them money. It's <laughs> a, it, it doesn't always show as in a, in an outward way. It can be something as simple as taking on the responsibility that is yours <clears throat> to take on and fulfilling it faithfully. Ooh. Boy, I really like that. that and I'll tell good. you why I really like it. It's, it's, it, if you think about, uh, um, works being the fruits on the tree of faith. Then you start to think about the fruits of the spirit and how many of those really can you see all the time? Yeah. Great point. Yeah. And, and, and to your point, Seth, we, we also have to know that James is not giving an exhaustive list of deeds or even really defining definitively what deeds are. Um, Again, he was speaking probably to a very specific group of people or a specific issue to a larger group of people. Um, and maybe they weren't doing certain things, so James kind of stirs the pot a little bit. Um, yeah, deeds definitely, there's definitely a long, a long list of ways that we live and are and be um, as a result of our faith. And you're right, those behind the scenes, uh, things especially like raising your kids and, and being or faithful in that praying for somebody and yeah there, i mean it, nobody patrick, sees that wasn't it patrick who asked the question is is prayer deeds or works and i, and I was oh yeah that some, was down here some of those who is prayer who, who, who i think of john tweet who we always um said was one of our prayer warriors because he couldn't do right <laughs> couldn't do much else he's right, in he has cerebral palsy and, right yes um cp and um and, and his his body, his physical body, and his financial state um, was was such that he you know he couldn't necessarily buy somebody a meal or a coat or or help an old lady across the street. The old lady has to push his wheelchair across the street, you know. Um, but he but he he does one of the one of the evidences of his faith was his optimism and positivity. Uh, aside from his prayer i mean he was always was i say was we haven't seen him for a long time he's doing well by the way um he, he's always encouraging and always uh positive and optimistic even in the even in his condition which is uh very <coughs> fruit of faith 
Yeah, and I, I, you yeah. Know, I think. So if I, uh, really quickly. Yeah, Seth, I um, really appreciated that. That was good. Uh, part of part of where that thought comes from is a discussion that I had with Doug and that Doug being Mormon and, and how he looks at things or his religion looks at things differently than uh, we do. And something that is very strongly put on by that community is that if you're not getting more members, if you're not evangelizing, if you're not spreading, uh, spreading the word, then you are not producing fruit and you don't have faith. And so it's, it's a very outward, uh, mm -hmm way of saying you you have fruit and you're doing deeds and i mean we've talked about it and we don't agree but mm. i mean that, that's why i like talking to him because we don't agree but we still talk about these things that's really good can, can i make a minor clarification on the point that yeah. you wrote down that i made um because i just want to clarify what which, i meant which, which point uh, was that <laughs> so how, so where, where, where you're saying how many of the fruits of the spirit exhibit themselves in deeds um, so uh, I guess the, the subtle clarification would be to carry forth what's, what I felt Seth was actually saying was that, well, I would say that they manifest themselves in deeds a lot, all the time. Not, no, it's not so much, right? I mean, because is, is, is faith an internal thing or deeds an internal thing that manifest themselves outwardly sometimes? Absolutely. But if you look at love and joy and peace and long suffering and goodness and kindness and, and self control, everything else. That's all internal. It's mm. all internal, right? So most of what we do with it probably <laughs> ought to be internal. We, I mean, you can't act out all the time, right? Yeah. So a better way to say that might be take take a look at the fruits of the spirit. They be they begin. It's an internal thing. It begins internal, exactly. right? I mean, yeah. is that what yeah. you're trying to say? Yeah. Yeah. And it works itself as deeds internally. A lot, I think, is what. The beauty of what Seth was saying a while ago is that a lot of the deeds happen like inside as opposed to something that's actively physical that other people could even see. Yeah, but, but even even those that are in in the womb of our being are 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 still birthed and seen. They find a way to get out. They <laughs> yeah. do find a way to get out. Because internally, if you're a kind person, it will come out. It, it, it will come out. You'll be, you'll just be kind. To, you'll be kind. Hallelujah, brother. That's yeah. what we were saying. I think. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and that James talked about this, right? And the rest of James, like James three is all about controlling the tongue. And there's that proverb that says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And you know, if you've got a lot of stuff going on in here, that's, that's dark and um, hateful and that kind of thing, it will, it will eventually come out. Right. Um, so I think that the idea that the spirit will that's why Jesus cursed overflow, the fig tree. that's why Jesus cursed the fig tree. Mm -hmm. It's 801. I, I don't know if I should, should give you 10 minutes to explain that. Nope. Nope, not at all. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> Next time. Um, wow. This has been really good. This has been really good. And Seth, I really appreciate you interjecting there with that because it kind of, it, it just, um, I hope you leave today realizing that just because you didn't walk the little lady across the street, you still, you can still have faith. You know what I'm saying? You didn't go to that prison and um, minister to the prisoner. You still have faith um, and belief. Do we cover that faith and belief just real quick? The words faith and belief here, are they in the Greek? Are they synonymous? Are they the same thing? I want to make no, sure. there's three words. He's using three different words here. That, that faith is translated in three different ways here. Oh, is that? Um, it, it, that's what those right three. The pistis? Yeah. Right. Pistis is uh, faith. Sometimes it's used to mean belief, depending on the context. It's one of okay. these three. Uh, pistuo is belief. Okay. So, it, I mean, it, they're all translated as the word faith in various places. What is the context? Connotation of trust. Is there a difference between faith and trust? Um. I think I, I think um, if I trust that something is true, it's more like that third one where I'm saying it. Pretty good chance it's true. I'll go ahead and believe that. Or it could mean full-on faith. I trust in the Lord. You know, I trust in God with my whole heart. So 
Uh, yeah, that's a good point. I think trust could be one of the words that's used. And, mm-hmm. you know, faith could, could be, James could use the word faith. He could use the word believe, belief or trust. So and this is more personal. It's, it's, the belief applying to, to yourself <clears throat> personal. Mm. Yeah, I think it's, yeah, I'll play on words. Oh, I'm sorry, Mom, did you say? Have you well, heard it? it says the demons believe, uh, and they believe, they know that God exists, so they believe. That doesn't mean they have saving faith. They just, uh, so right. I don't know what word is used, you know, in in that in that verse in verse 19 but i'll, I'll check it out they yeah they have an intellectual assent and in other right. words they have, they have knowledge they, knowledge they believe that they they know it to be true yeah and that was in uh 26 verse 26 is that correct? no that was in um the very verse last 19. 19, 19. 19. yeah that's i think once you look that up we've covered most of the questions um we didn't we didn't really cover Megan's question about um if someone has works without faith or belief, are those acts as beneficial as done by somebody who has faith? Would that be like an atheist doing uh, charitable work? Sure. If some do. Sure. Oh a lot do. Yeah. <laughs> a lot. Maybe more than Christians. Yeah, I mean a lot of them. But all good comes from God. Right. So right. God's working through them even if they don't know. Amen. I think that's where I stand on that issue. It's like, yeah. you know, if Bill Gates, you know, gives billions of dollars to feed people in Africa or come up with a vaccine or something, you know, then, you know, God can use that. And we Or if Hitler you know, gave a sandwich and a cup of water to somebody that was thirsty and hungry, you know. Right. It, it's, it's an extreme, but God the person that gets it ought to be thanking God that God gave it to them, whether it came through Hitler or not. Exactly. Right. Absolutely. But it's likely he wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we don't. Well, based on track record, yeah. <laughs> um, did, Megan, does that help you? Does that answer that question, do you think? Yeah, I mean, I already, I already... Um, you already had an answer <laughs> no 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 not that i have an answer like i don't i don't have more thoughts than just that what what you guys have said which i also agree i'm just gonna put all good things from god mm-hmm. yeah i yeah. also have a i have a note that doesn't really uh answer any question but it's just i think it's interesting it's a footnote in my bible for verse 16 Okay. Where in my translation, it's it's where he's giving the example of um, if a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, "Go in peace, keep warm, and eat your fill," yet you do not supply their bodily needs. Uh, what good is that? And it notes that the verbs, the Greek verbs for "keep warm" and "eat your fill," are passive in Greek, which um, uh, it expresses a, pi- a pious belief that God will relieve the needs of the poor. And I just thought that was interesting. It's like the fact that they're passive means that like, well, that's not my thing to do. Like it's not my, it's no concern of mine. It's not my responsibility. That's just, almost like saying good luck, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, well, you're, <laughs> it's like, you're yeah, be your warm. I mean, there be is warm like, and be full. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> like I guess it does you know it says it expresses a, a belief that God will relieve the needs of the poor which I think is true but I think it is not acknowledging the fact that God works through people the Phillips translation does say uh, that you say good luck to you and I hope you'll keep <laughs> one find enough to eat nice. and yet, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, boy, what a trite and silly platitude that would be if you were starving to death and had no clothes. <laughs> oh, that's that's like a that's like kicking somebody when they're down. You know, they're down on their luck. Yeah. You say good, 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 good luck with that. Well, so I guess a good terrible. prayer for us would be to say, "Am I the answer to this prayer? I mean, right here, this person like is does God? Because we like we can't. Who said it? Um, we can't. I think Seth said it. We can't go giving money to every single person that's out on the street homeless." Um, but we can pray and we can say, 
you know, am I for this person in this situation, am I the answer to their prayer? Like, cause God, God is looking. I mean, I think he's looking around to see who's available. And, um, often I try to pray that prayer in the morning, like, okay, I'm available. God, if there's somebody you want me to call, encourage, bless, you know, sometimes I forget to pray that prayer. Um, but I think he, I think you're right. He, that, that whole thing, be warm and be filled is it's not acknowledging that God uses people to take care of people. Yeah. yeah you're in our thoughts and prayer. Well, you're, yeah. Yeah. Sometimes that can become trite too. Um, but, and yet prayer could be one of those true. deeds that flows out of faith that nobody will ever see. You'll never get credit for it, you know, but that could be a very passionate thing when you pray for somebody and lift them up. Um, Paul, Paul mentions about Epaphras, who is one of you, always laboring fervently for you in prayer. Right, right. So I, I guess one thing is we don't judge each other by our works. We can't. It, that's, it, I mean, I think Seth made that clear in his statement um, cause being faithful could be taking care of your family. It could be taking care of your health, your mental health. It could be like, there are seasons. There are. And, and, and honestly, you know, to sit and, and have judgment placed on somebody because they don't have the right works. Um, you know, they haven't saved enough souls or done enough mission trips or whatever. Um, Paul said, if any man, um, uh, provides not for his own, especially his own family, he's worse. Yeah. Worse than a person who doesn't believe. Worse than an infill. He's denied right. the truth. Worse than an infidel. Yeah. Right. Hey, can I say a word about people working through people? Because you mentioned that, Anne. It's yeah. Money for sale. <clears throat> so yeah. I think I mentioned. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, it's it's ten after. If anybody needs to go, feel free. We'll we'll just close close with Daryl's thought. Yeah, I want to hear it. Okay, so I think I mentioned the last time that the by the, the great preponderance of the times that God worked with me to do something or other, it was. 99%, it was somebody else's voice who had God's spirit talking to my heart that also had God's spirit and stirred me to action. So if somebody says, hey, Daryl, don't you think you ought to do this or that? And I, my heart jumps, I think, you know what? You're right, I ought to. Uh, those, <clears throat> those kinds of works still come from God through faith, and he, our conscience is still employed, and there's still what appears to be you know, an if-then route that we have to take, right? If I do this, then that'll happen, and our conscience is employed by God. To do those works but it is still god doing those works and it's still the faith that's in us that causes us to want to do it and it's still that interaction through humans that god why because god loves relationships he could just yell out and scare me to death and tell me to do it <laughs> but i just wanted to make that 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 point about why we do good works it's almost always because uh, somebody else inspires us to do it it may not be that they tell us to do it maybe we see somebody starving and our conscience tells us maybe you ought to feed the guy. But if we hadn't seen him, we wouldn't feel like doing a good work, maybe that good work, especially. Anyway, you get the point. That's, 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 what, John, that's what John says. He says, is it, if any man see a brother or sister in need and uh, doesn't provide for him, how dwells the love of God in him? That's right, Stanley. Beautiful. Jamie, did I see you your hand up? Did you have your hand up, Jamie? No? Okay. I was going to say you could turn that around and say how dwells the love in God of God in you if you don't do good work. <laughs> you could turn that one around either way. That's right. And Jesus is purifying to himself a uh, uh, people zealous of good works. Mm. At least they want to do good works. Mm. <clears throat> well, um, let me have Mark go ahead and close us out in prayer and then feel free to stay on and chat if you'd like to. Um, great discussion. We only made it through five, five verses, but hey, that's all right. It's good. This is, you know, this is a big topic, um, especially like Seth brought up the point. He's got a good friend who's a Mormon. They used to work together and they've remained friends. And I love the fact that they can have dialogue, disagree, and remain friends. Uh, we were just talking before <laughs> the meeting started. Uh, Jamie had a friend who d unfriended her because of something she posted. And, um, you know, it, we're kind of in that day and age where it's like, oh, I don't, I don't agree with you. We can't be friends anymore. And I just think that's really unhealthy. I think we need to be um, able to agree to disagree and have charity and love in all things. 
And, and like we talked about in the beginning, like when you listen to somebody, even if you don't agree with them and you just sit and listen to them and you don't have to defend, uh, argue, you can just sit and listen, you're showing respect and you're honoring their humanity. Um, so I think that's a great way to end. So Mark, mm -hmm. would you close us out and just pray for our deeds? <laughs> Yeah, loving God, Father, Son, and Spirit, we thank you for your love, your grace, and your perfection, and for your patience with us, because you are perfect and holy and righteous, and, and we struggle with that. We aren't perfect. As a matter of fact, we're a wreck, mm. uh, but what I love and enjoy, and, I, and I'm sure you do too, is the fact that we come together, uh, and we, we struggle and wrestle with the scripture, and we, we dig and dive and discover uh, your goodness there and let that uh, overflow into um, or pour into our hearts and our minds and souls that it may overflow uh, in our lives and to those around us. So we thank you for our time together. I pray for health and well-being. I pray that we are um, circumspect, that we're respectful uh, to others because we all like to be respected. So may we respect others and um, continue to uh, keep in tune with uh, the world around us and that we might, as the spirit leads, uh, step in and, and do good works, uh, do our part as, as we are led. Uh, we give you thanks again in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you all. I will stop sharing. I should have stopped sharing before.